Say something that will make my day. Cause these memories of her won't go away. Alright, guys, so one of the things that I couldn't do when I was in the Caribbean in our first video that you would have seen is change the anode on the back of the propeller here. So I've finally gotten the old anode off and I'm pretty excited to put the new one on. So let's go for it. This is pretty straightforward. This has got a little groove inside of it and it lines up with the groove on here and it's just a single screw. So there we go. That's it. New anode on. Her and I, she promised me to never leave my side. But she left me here alone. I know it's dumb. I still check my phone. Cause I can't move on. So one of the things I'm working on right now is I'm moving the old bootstripe, as you can see here. Um, we wanted to do this before, but we didn't get a chance when we were in the BVI's. Um, I've got the new bootstripe, so the first things first, I'm using a heat gun, and I'm slowly peeling the old bootstripe off. So I just heat up a little bit at a time, and then just pull a little bit more. So both boost stripes are off now. The starboard side yesterday, because I did it in the evening, it was too cold. Uh, it took me about six hours. Finished around midnight. I decided to do the port side the next day, and it took me three hours, so. And the guy just started up the pressure washer. All right, guys, so I thought I'd come back inside because it's too much boat work going on outside, and it's impossible to try to explain things. Um, so the boot stripes are off the boat now. It's incredible to see the paint underneath because um, I'm not sure if that's the boot stripe from the factory or if there's been another one applied uh, since, um, but it's absolutely pristine under. So it kind of gives me something to work towards now when I polish the boat. So um, the steps I'm going to go through, um, I've never actually compounded, polished or done anything to a boat before. So this is all a learning experience for me and I've just watched loads of YouTube videos, spoken to people. All right, so. In terms of the tools that I'm going to use, I did a lot of research on this and um, there's actually a really great YouTube channel um, that I've watched that uh, this guy's fantastic. Um, now I'm certainly not affiliated with him at all, I just think the, the, the DIY videos that he puts out um, are fantastic, they're really easy to follow. Um, so it's a great channel called Boatworks Today, uh, I highly recommend checking them out, the guy uh, is fantastic. Uh, I think his name's Andy. What I've decided to do is I've actually invested in buying my own buffer. So the reason I bought one is because instead of renting, I'm probably going to do this a few more times in the future. And I think one of the reasons I haven't done as much previously is just because I haven't had the tools. So um, now the one that comes highly recommended is the Makita 9237CB. So this is the one I've gone with. Um, I actually bought it online from a guy, I think it was an unwanted Christmas present because brand new in the box, um, which is fantastic and I got an absolute bargain. I know this is quite a popular one that uh, a lot of uh, people who work in the industry use, so um, one of the most important 
things about this particular polisher uh, is that it doesn't slow down under load. So no matter how much pressure you put on it, it keeps the same RPMs, um, which some of the less expensive ones will not do. Um, and if you put pressure on it and the RPM slows, then you can uh, get swirl marks and, and that kind of thing. So very important. Um, and it has variable speed. So the other things that I'm gonna be using are, I've got a compounding pad. Uh, this is just a wool compounding pad. And then I have a 3M polishing pad. So um, I'm gonna go for a three-step process, an oxidation remover. So um, I picked up one called Meguiar's, uh, number 49 oxidation remover. I'll be going for a polish. Um, I don't actually have the polish on me, um, but I'll be using a, a 3M polish. And then to finish it off, I'll be using 3M's uh, wax. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm not affiliated with any of these products, just so you know. Uh, these are just the ones that I've chosen based on uh, reviews and um, you know, a few people I've ha had the chance to talk to. I'm a little nervous, but <laughs> we'll give it a go, all right, guys? We've got our variable speed buffer. We've got our polishing compound, wool pad, cloths, and some cleaner. We're good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape off just here at the water line and I'm going to tape off any fittings on the outside of the boat. I'm actually going to tape around our logo as well because I'm not sure whether the compound will actually melt the logo. So uh, better to be safe than sorry. All right, I'm all taped off. So now we're going to put our wool pad on our buffer here. This is a wool pad you actually use for compounding. So um, the wool itself actually has some bite from what I understand, so yeah. Uh, this works on a Velcro system, so you should just literally have to. That's it. As I said, I've just done my test patch and I was just about to carry on. Unfortunately, the guy that I borrowed the platform from needed it back. Uh, let's see what we can do, see if we can find another platform around here, otherwise I might just have to wait around for a bit. First round of compounding is complete and look at that shiny boat. I'm absolutely gobsmacked at how good this stuff works. Already looks better than the boat next to me that's had a full polish. So I can't even imagine what it's going to look like when it's all polished up. Let me take you around the boat. All right, guys, well, we had a big day yesterday. Um, I compounded the port side of the hull and it looks awesome. Um, I couldn't be happier. It's the first time I've ever done it and I think it turned out really, really well. Um, I also had to wet sand off the old logo that was on the bow on either side. Um, I don't know if you've seen in the earlier videos, but the old logo, which was Barefoot Life, I think it was about, it must've been about six feet long. Um, the adhesive would not come off with any chemical, used everything you can think of. So in the end, I had to wet sand it yesterday and it took hours for each side. So, um, and then I buffed it at the end using, uh, using the compounding material. So, uh, support side's done. I'm going to get started on the starboard side today. However, I'm a little low on my compounding material because I use a little bit more than I thought I would. And... I'm running out, but I'll go as far as I can with what I have. I've ordered some more and it should be here tomorrow, so not a, not a worry. If I run out, then... Well, it's been four days of compounding, polishing, waxing, but we are finally ready to put Zephyr's new bootstripes back on. 
I'm pretty darn excited. Uh, this is the last step in basically making the hull look as close to new as possible. So should be pretty simple. I think it's just a, uh, it's got a backing and you just kind of roll it on one side sticky. So um, we'll see how we go. 50 feet, we're 43, should have a little bit of spare just in case I make any mistakes. So let's go. New vinyl bootstripe is on in the hurricane, I guess, you know, when it fell over, the jack stands sort of slid up the hull. Um, they all kind of got torn in sections, plus there was, you know, a few gel coat repairs, I think, over the time, and just wear and tear. Um, it was pretty chewed up, so. Um, but putting these on was a really big pain in the backside, and I'll tell you why. Because of the shape of the boat, and because the boat curves in like this, um, putting a straight decal on is near and impossible. These decals should be asymmetrical in theory um, to run with the boat, but they're not. They're absolutely printed flat and cut flat. So it's, it, it was such a pain. You have to kind of stretch it and keep tweaking it as you go. And this one I got on pretty darn exact. The back end is where it got really, really difficult because the back end really curves under. Um, but the other side of the boat, I screwed up so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh, I did it like, a, you know, I got about halfway down the boat and um, I looked back and I had this big dip in it. And then, you know, you, the good thing is you can, it, you can back it off. So it's not as soon as you put it down, you know, there's, there's no hope after that. You can actually back the decal off and, you know, keep trying to get it until you get it to the right spot. And so I backed it off and then all of a sudden the wind kicked up and the wind all of a sudden, it was up like 25 knots and the whole decal went zoom down the side of the boat and almost the whole thing came off. Um, but the problem was as a result, about 10 foot of the decal was totally ruined. So I've got a small splice in the decal on the other side. I'll, I'll take you around and show you. Um, and yeah, I'm just not happy with it, but um, yeah. Match put together, but let's go. I'll show you. I'll go show you that splice. So here's that splice I had to do. I mean, I tried to get it as exact as possible. I hate it. I notice it. You know, I'm sure most people wouldn't even see it, but I I think it looks horrendous. So. Yeah. There you go. Boat is now compounded, polished. New bootstripes are on. It's been an actual four solid days of compounding and polishing to get the boat where it is. I'm gonna show you what it looks like now because it looks awesome.
Join us next week as we continue with the repairs to Zephyr. A violent windstorm causes chaos in the boatyard. And all the hard work pays off as we finally launch Zephyr. If you are new to our channel, consider subscribing so you can join the adventure each week aboard Zephyr. They say the true test of a good polish is when you're actually standing straight on. If you get the reflection, then you know you got a good polish.